Kurt Cobain thought Penny Royal T was a surefire hit, but he ended up hating the final in utero mix. So, why did he choose to perform it solo on MTV Unplugged, leaving his bandmates behind? Do it by yourself. Okay. And did Courtney Love really help write it? Welcome to story behind iconic songs on Soundscapes Rock. Alright, so the song we're talking about is Penny Royal T. It's the ninth track on Nirvana's third and final studio album, In Utero, which came out in September 1993. But to really understand it, we need to go back a bit in time. So Penny Royal Tea is a tea made from an herb that's been used as an abortifacient since ancient times. It's also been used in love potions and as a symbol of illicit sexuality. In the 19th century, Penny Royal was even sold in pill form to cure menstrual blockages, which was a coded phrase for inducing miscarriage. What is Penny Royal tea used for? Um, if the fetus um, is not thriving and has died in the womb and needs to be uh, eliminated from the body, this is an herb combined with other herbs in proper dosing that will be used to effectively um, do that. In Kurt's journals, a collection of his personal writings that includes diary entries, lyrics, and musings on various songs he was working on. Under the heading Penny Royal Tea, he noted that it's a herbal abortive and added, It doesn't work, you hippie. Who do you think he's talking to? Let us know in the comments below. When it comes to who actually wrote the song, things get a bit confusing. There are two different statements from Kurt that seem to contradict each other. According to Michael Azarad, Kurt said he wrote Penny Royal Tea during the bleak winter of 1990 in an apartment on Pear Street, right after the band signed. He said Dave and I were screwing around on a four track and I wrote that song in about 30 seconds. And I sat down for like a half an hour and wrote the lyrics and then we recorded it. But then there's another story from a 1993 interview with author Gavin Edwards. For the book, is Tiny Dancer Really Elton's Little John? In this interview, Kurt revealed that he actually wrote Penny Royal Tea together with Courtney Love. He talked about how much he loved making music with her, but also mentioned that they probably wouldn't release their collaborations because it was a bit too reminiscent of John and Yoko. So here's where things get interesting. Even though Kurt said he wrote Penny Royal Tea in just a few minutes, the recording process for the song actually took years and went through quite a few stages. Nirvana first performed it live on April 91 at the OK Hotel in Seattle. Fast forward to October 92. Two unfinished instrumental takes of the song were recorded by Jack and Dino at Word of Mouth Studios in Seattle. But these takes were missing vocals. So it wasn't until February 93 that Steve Albini recorded the final studio version of Penny Royal T for the In Utero album. However, Kurt wasn't happy with how this version turned out. He told Rolling Stone magazine that the song was not recorded right, and it should have been recorded like Nevermind, because that's a strong song. So Kurt had producer Scott Litt remix the song again, with plans to release it as a single. They even planned to make a music video, and Kurt personally asked Anton Corbine, the director of the heart-shaped box video, to direct it. However, he declined. So instead, they brought in director Jeffrey Plansker. Kurt went as far as creating a mood board to show the vibe he wanted for the video. But these plans were abandoned after Kurt's death in 1994, and the release was quickly pulled. The timing was just too sensitive, and the potential controversy around the song's topic was a lot to handle. Still, a few hundred copies of this single got out before it was cancelled, and then melted down. These rare copies are now highly sought after, with prices reaching around $500 or more each. In fact, a truly 100% genuine version of the Penny Royal TCD single is considered one of the top three most collectible Nirvana items. Then, in 2014, the single was officially re-released as a limited edition 7-inch vinyl for Record Store Day, with only 6,000 copies available. 
This re-release was a big deal, and the single even became the top-selling vinyl single of Record Store Day in the US, and hitting number one on the Billboard Hot 100 Singles chart. Kurt's meticulousness with the song also showed during the MTV Unplugged session in November 93. The setlist initially planned for Kurt and Pat Smear to perform Penny Royalty together. However, during rehearsals earlier that day, the band tried different approaches to the song, including playing it in a different key and with Pat on backing vocals. He was singing the harmony, but had to go lower and quieter than usual, which made it hard for him to find the final note in line with Kurt. He ended up slightly out of tune and without much power behind his voice, so it just sounded like mumbling in the background. And Dave tried to help Pat find the harmony, but it wasn't working. So, they decided a bare-bones performance was better, with Kurt doing it by himself. Are you going to not sing? No. Do it by yourself. Okay. Despite the issues in rehearsals, this solo approach allowed them to do it right. In fact, Penny Royal T was the only song during the MTV Unplugged performance that Kurt played alone. Now let's take a closer look at the lyrics and their meaning. In his book, Michael Azarad shared what Kurt said about the song. He said, I've known girls who tried to drink it because they thought they were pregnant. It's a cleansing theme where I'm trying to get all my bad evil spirits out of me, and drinking Penny Royal Tea would cleanse that away. You have to drink gallons of it, and I heard it doesn't work very well. I've never found herbs to ever work for me, anything. Ginseng and any of that other shit is all a bunch of hippie left-wing fascist propaganda. So, when Kurt sings Distill the Life That's Inside of Me, He's talking about wanting to cleanse his life and start fresh, possibly through some form of self-abortion. And the line, references the remedies Kurt used to try to alleviate his gastrointestinal issues. It also hints at his addiction, since many use laxatives to combat the chronic constipation that comes with it. Kurt also referenced another famous songwriter prone to depression by saying, He explained that this reference to Cohen was his way of dealing with his depression, though he said it actually made him feel worse. Cohen wrote many introspective songs dealing with death and his place in the universe, something Kurt did as well. Another perspective is that royalty is traced through bloodlines. Those who are anemic royalty are people who claim to be distant relatives of a royal bloodline. Kurt's use of this phrase likely comments on his rapid rise to being revered as a king in the music world. Or, the lyrics could simply reflect Kurt's view of himself as a lazy, weak figurehead who is depressed and sad and wants a new life. So, which interpretation seems closer to reality for you? And most importantly, what does the song mean to you? Let us know in the comments. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. See you in the next video.